Welcome to Italy Solid Food. Uh, so the big one never comes. Uh, comes. The yeah, it's like an energy gel we use. Uh, again, uh, the 12 hours, uh, 18 hours, uh, I didn't have any pee or anything because the amount of drink uh, I, I was carrying only one liter of uh, water. Uh, water. So amount of drink you have, right? Uh, the output, output, uh, nothing come out extra. So usually, usually a lot of climbers they carry one bottle, and you need to do your stuff inside the inside the down. So use that bottle. And a lot of time you may get sick, right? Suppose you got a diarrhea, right? Then you carry the diaper. But if you feel like oh, it's okay, then you don't carry the diaper. How much extra weight was there? Like if you take your own weight. What was all the things added? How much was the extra okay. uh, Yours, uh, the boot is about together 5 pounds. Okay, oh, with Campone it will be 6 pounds. Uh, the, this is like about 4 pounds, so 10 pounds. Oxygen cylinder is uh, about uh, 6, uh, no, it's 5.5 uh, 5 kg is about like uh, 12 pounds. So you will carry another 25 pounds to 30 pounds uh, extra weight. Or uh, you need to carry water, oxygen cylinder. Uh, this all goes right. Uh, and the water you were getting was not frozen. Uh, so you have to. Uh, uh, so this is the one of the flux, right? I tell, so before going, you need to taste whatever you buy, right? So I usually brought uh, different kind of flux and put the hot water and put inside the freezer. Then I ask uh, Neha to kind of note down what time you started in uh -huh. eight hours. Which got frozen, right? So I tested, like actually, I have another friend who tested a couple of them, then we zeroed in. So this, uh, I think it went for eight hours plus in the freezer. So you put the water here, and this is extra protection. Uh, this is another thermal cover. So you put your flux inside this. Can I ask you one more question? Yeah, yeah, definitely. What does a trip like this cost, and did you have any financial support? Uh, no financial support. Uh, so a uh, whole trip process uh, myself. So usually, uh, average is a costly business. You will spend up at least to fifty to uh, fifty thousand to like hundred twenty thousand, depends what uh, what you do. But uh, there's a reason for the cost. Uh, one is the Nepal government, right? They charge around like fifteen thousand as a fee. So that's the kind of a royalty you get. Then you use about ten to fifteen oxygen cylinder. Uh, you yourself, your self was right and that's those cylinder cost around uh, 600 to 1000 dollar because somebody has to buy it carry it waste them all the way from right that's the another cost then you are there for uh, one and a half month to two months all the food right then that serpa going with you his salary is all this right so all it's a cost, costly uh, costly expedition so, so here, what about the cash you showed us the some of the trash, you showed us some of the trash. <laughs> you showed us some of the trash in camp, sir, the cylinder and all. Did you see trash like in the base camp? And we did a lot about it. Uh, actually, it's a good question. The uh, question is about the trash at the Everest, right? Uh, so, base camp, it's very clean. Now, you will not find a single piece of paper or anywhere. So, always there is a dustbin there. Uh, dustbin there. So, all the trash goes there. Uh, then about the human waste, right, in the base camp, so you have a pit toilet, so they use a plastic kind of drum, so the toilet, that's filled, right, it's sealed, it's take from the base camp, there's a disposable area, so there, but above base camp, when you go to the camp one, uh, usually human waste is like a, it's a temporary toilet, they bury it there. Uh, camp four, uh, a lot of trash, uh, oxygen cylinder they carry back, because a lot of them are reused, so oxygen cylinder, the one you see, right? Those are already they stopped there because the first team we went there. So they will be using it during, right? And when surfers are coming down, they will carry the oxygen cylinder. And any trash, uh, try, to, try, to, try to carry it, but you will find a lot of tents. Those are already destroyed. And, those are, and actually a lot of people die around camp 4. 
and there is a place like near near the Hueta Tensa there, a small mountain. There is a cave there, so all the human bodies are like a kind of put there. But above came for uh, whoever died, right? Uh, just by, so Nepal rule is like uh, Serpa, they never touch any bodies once unless there is a permission from the family or domain to clean up. So then they never touch it. So whoever died there, they just remain there. Yes. Uh, so you. Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, the standard package you have a one serpa. Uh, so I had a two serpa. So last time when I went, I realized like uh, first time I went last time. So what uh, the second serpa is like your insurance plan. So most of the time like you do yourself. So what help it does that like, suppose you are in top right in Hillary step, the congestion came uh, congestion came right. Uh, so you calculate your oxygen intake and there's a calculation how much you will use, right? Uh, then you take some buffer. Now suppose in the top uh, you get stuck there, either because of bad weather or because of lot of people, right? Then your calculation will go. So you have a two choice, either you have to come down without some meat, then second choice is like it will run out, right? Ultimately you will die there. So your second serpa help you to carry extra oxygen. So I was having two more oxygen, so I have to have one more person. So that second serpa helped me help on that. Yeah, question is like, uh, uh, how do you get sick in the average and if you're sick, how do you prevent? So you, you need to take care of yourself and uh, fasting, fasting in the average is like you take care of your, so that you don't fall in any sickness, that's the fasting because you can prepare a lot, everything, right? If you go there and get sick, then everything is gone. So uh, so the way to prevent is you just basically follow all the hygiene, hygiene, right? General hygiene you follow, that's one. Uh, second, you don't try to do a lot of things in a day, so it's uh, like a slow step. You slowly climatize, slowly climatize your body. You don't try to put a lot of stress on our body. So it's a slow process. Uh, it's a very good question. Uh, what preparation you need for uh, uh, climbing Everest? Uh, so there's three preparation actually. It's a called aerobic preparation and aerobic endurance. And muscle endurance and core. So uh, I'll come up with one example. So you are going an environment where oxygen is very low. So you need to prepare yourself, your body, make efficient easily your aerobic system so that it becomes efficient on low oxygen. So that's one preparation. Uh, second, your muscles, because you have to move a lot, go up, down, right? You have to do a lot of exercise. There are certain ways to do exercise so that your muscle become very efficient. And so you can use the low oxygen and still it become efficient. And third is the called core. Uh, core is like, uh, heart is like your machine, like where energy is produced. Muscle is the one that's really help you to move. Uh, core is the one that's your body, body structure and how, right? The energy produced here need to move into the muscle, right? all your bones and uh, structure back, right? Those are called core. So these three you need to prepare. Uh, usually for average, if you are more have a more muscle, it will it will be disadvantage for you because you are going in a low environment. Uh, you have a limited oxygen. If your oxygen is used to maintain your body, if you have a lot of muscle, it's not good for you. So usually you need to have a balance, not less muscle. If you have a less muscle, you become weak. If you have a more muscle, that will become a overhead for your uh, system. So your body, your aerobic system is engaged more in maintaining your body rather than moving it. So these are the different people. <laughs> okay. Uh, question is uh, like who trained me? Uh, so you usually fasting is like a you find out what needed, right? Uh, one is like definitely physical fitness, uh, that's one. Uh, 
So first initial preparation goes on just physical fitness, general fitness, right? Then, uh, then you need to think about how to make your aerobic system. So for one year I had a coach who is helping me to develop that aerobic system and how to prepare for the Everest. So when you go for mountain climbing, uh, based on the mountain, some mountain, it may not be too high. So, but you need a lot of strength. So, the, those mountains you need, may need to create, carry a lot of weight. And then you need to develop more muscle. For, for average, your core thing is how to develop your core system. I had a course for that. So, who who's trained me like, he basically give a signal. So, I wear a uh, heart monitor and they, they do the data transmitted to him. He analyzed. Then he give me the next session where I need to improve. Yeah, US, yeah. It's an online course, like, uh, it's, you can do a lot of things online nowadays. You can wear the monitor, and there's an app, those uh, monitor will transmit data to those app, and with this app, uh, the course can monitor, and you can see all the uh, aesthetics, right? How your heart is performing, uh, everything you can see, and based on that, uh, uh, whoever expert, they will advise you what next step needs to be done. Yeah, training actually, climbing you will get it, but a lot of time your experience comes. Uh, so you just cannot go to the Everest and climb it uh, because you need to have that mental preparation to stay long. It's an expedition for multi days. So you need to have that mental uh, preparation. So whenever you go and climb other mountains, so those are also that not as long as Everest. So there for one week, two weeks. So once you start doing that, right, you get preparation how to be stay for seven days, eight days, ten days, right? So that, that's also very important for Everest. Uh, so you get, you, you try to get the experience and then you get, you see where your deficit is, you try to improve this. So, so I noticed that uh, you have a lot of time and planning uh, is very critical. So now, you have a lot of preparation done by the federal side of yeah. yeah. Uh, so I think uh, when uh, Hillary and uh, Hillary and Tendinga first submitted, right, uh, you can only realize how difficult it was for them. I can see a lot of the things. You already know the road. It's already a lot of things are already done by Serpa, right? So you are still you need to do a lot of preparation. So imagine like first person who went there, nothing is there. So somehow they had to figure out the route, uh, go there and figure out all the difficulties. So it was really you really appreciate how uh, they done it. So you may have, earlier I, may, I read it, I never realized how it would be difficult. But once you get there, you see how it is, right? You really appreciate how they have done that. Yeah. Unfortunately, we are out of time at this hall. Thank you all so much for coming out. Your help and contributions are definitely most appreciated. To ask, and we also have some light refreshments in the back. Uh, I'll start with the gears, which are kind of life-saving. Uh, uh, this is one piece of suit. Uh, this is called down suit. Uh, a 8,000 meter down suit. Uh, so, you can actually... Uh, Okay, I, I think you can come and see. Uh, the whole suit has a lot of like sense so that whenever uh, you are hot or right, you can adjust to the different uh, uh, condition. So that that's one. Uh, the second piece of uh, which is the boot. Uh, uh, this is the boot uh, we use for that uh, using the average, right? Uh, so. It has a multiple layer. Uh, you have a very a thick socks. It's called summit socks. And uh, this is the first layer you have. 
then the second layer, then you, uh, you put in a boot. Uh, boot uh, and you have to see here, uh, there's no laces here. It's basically screw it. I, because when you, when you go up, like you have all the big uh, gloves, right? It's really hard to tie a knot. So it's all... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, you can tie it. Another piece of uh, piece of very important to save your hair. Uh, so this is like all the way. This is like a heated water, heated water. Filament here. Uh, yeah. Uh, then this is the second layer, and uh, usually the the way you use it. So this is your full, uh, full, uh, full like mitten. Uh, two things you need to notice here: uh, the four fingers are together because when you go up, it's too cold. Uh, if your gloves are in like only like this, right? Then your heat will not. Uh, one finger may may not heat well. Then you may get a frostbite, and uh, then you need to cut your finger. So keep this four finger together uh, so that. And the heat, uh, right? Whatever body heat generated, right? It distributed across the whole finger. And this you need as a separate because you need to use in a lot of clips. You need to use this to uh, use the another finger for clips. And usually, so all the time uh, I'll be wearing this two, this two, and uh, whenever there's a difficulty in clipping, right? Then I'll take out from here, clip it, then again uh, put it back. So this is the mitten, uh, mitten. So, uh, this is called the harness. Uh, the harness one, you'll wear it here. And there's two, two important clip here. Uh, this, we call it safety. So these two, these two are the safety. So uh, all the time, uh, this two will be uh, clip into the rope. So whenever you are crossing one, right, you will take one first, then uh, get it to the other, other side, uh, other side. And th this is the one that will save your life. A lot of time you will slip, but it will still it will still be there good. Uh, you can pull back uh, because you are clipped to the rope. And this is another. Uh, this is called zoomer. Uh, uh, what this does, this can only go up. Uh, so the way it works, you need to clip this to the Everest rope. Then you can go up, but you cannot go down. So when you are climbing up, uh, this is the one you are using. So you basically put it, so you pull yourself up. Slip no way. Otherwise, uh, otherwise you can go up, then uh, you'll slip all the way down. Uh, you, 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 you'll be in an accident also, right? You, say, you suddenly fall down. And then I think you see, saw one of the video that uh, where the people are coming down. Uh, this is another device. This is a small device called ATC device. Uh, this is used for uh, coming down. The way it is used, the various rope will be there. So. So by the way, this all you need to send like when you are climbing, all this will be in your clip. Then based on the situation, you need to put like a, uh, put all those, like you need to bring it here. Uh, I'll show you how to do it. This, um, so your rope will go inside this. Then these two, you'll clip, clip one of them. Then use, uh, this is the one, uh, it create a friction. So you, you can use it to go down. So if you pull all the way down, it will lock you. Then if you little bit lose, right, then it will allow to go down. And usually uh, when you are going in a plane, right, uh, uh, 
uh, in a plain land, uh, plain ice, right? Then you will just use this one. Others will be clip, uh, clip on your side. Then you will bring it when you go up. Then immediately you will bring it up here. Then you start using it. Once you are done, then you need to again put it back. So you need to keep on sending all the based on uh, whether you are ascending or descending. You need to use the different devices here. I think others are Uh, when I, I went there, a right, lot of time many of I think have tracked me. So what I can do here, uh, I can use this device, uh, it's like a GPS tracker. So then uh, I can share the coordinates. So if I share that, so it will generate a URL. Uh, with that URL, you can really track me in real time. So you can see exactly where, you can see the map, you can zoom the map, you will know exactly what point I am. And this is the camera I was using. Uh, because if you use any phones and this thing, it's difficult to use with task scan, right? So this is very simple uh, camera. So it's basically it's easy to use. Like you can take out and use the button. It's very, it has a two function like record and this. It's very easy to use, but it's like a very good quality picture. And I have a gimbal also, a bell, uh, like a stability. Also. So a lot of picture uh, videos is taken by uh, Huh? Yeah, GoPro also you can mount, but it's a lot of work to mount a GoPro. But this is more easy, you give it to one of your server, then you can take and uh, it's easy to use also. GoPro problem is like when you go up, up uh, it's about 12 hours, the battery will run out, it will expose outside, uh, the temperature will be down, right? the battery will run out.